Good afternoon, everybody. A warm welcome to the Impact Africa. Good afternoon, everybody. Seems like I was beforehand there. Good afternoon and welcome to the Impact Africa Social Entrepreneurship Summit 2021. This will be the first edition for this whole year. Expect uh, many, many more sessions that we'll be having with you and hosting webinars on different topics that pertain to social entrepreneurs in the African context. I'd like to give you a warm welcome from a very rainy and cold Johannesburg city today. My name is Mutunya Nakita. I will be your host this afternoon and I will be presenting four speakers to you today and we'll be talking to the topic of change agility and the new strategic advantage for social entrepreneurs in the fourth industrial revolution. This is, in fact, as you know, a collaboration between the British Council and also Ashoka Africa. We started the summit journey last year and we've continued again into the new year, but we will be hosting different elements as per what has been scheduled in the website. So please, you're welcome to register www.impactafricasummit.net. Go there. Have a look at the different elements that we'll be presenting to you as each month proceeds, and you're welcome to register and enjoy the different webinars. This afternoon, I also have with me Mr. Peter Oyakale and Ms. Blessing Ini. They will be our sign language interpreters, and therefore, we'd, I'd like you to also welcome them and expect to see them on the screen with you. We're being very inclusive as we understand we've got a wide array of attendees joining us this afternoon and also going forward. Just on that note, before I begin the proceedings or the agenda for this afternoon, may I please also just give you a few housekeeping rules as per usual, as per normal. We will be having a chat function that I believe that you can see on your right hand side. The chat function allows you as attendees to put in your comments, to put in your questions as we go along with the, with the session today. You're welcome to ask the speakers individually, but of course I will read these questions and comments out for you. You're also welcome to put in comments around what you would like to see spoken about or spoken at or attended to or engaged on by not only myself as the moderator to send it to the speakers, but also as the speakers themselves, if there's any clarification that you need. So please, you're more than welcome. Use the chat function. And also just to give you a heads up, later on within the webinar, there will also be a link in the comment section that allows you also to give feedback on how you experience how you are currently experiencing and also how you experience the webinar today. We will put the link halfway through the webinar and we'll also include the link at some point at the end. This will be your feedback form. You're welcome to put in what you would like to also see us address in, in the future webinars and also some of the feedback around the comments and the questions and also most importantly, the relevance to the social entrepreneurship ecosystem. I would like then on that note to please invite our first speaker this afternoon. She is the country director for Nigeria and her name is Miss Lucy Pearson. She will be giving us a warm welcome from the British Council um, leadership team and just giving us a highlight of why the summit is happening and what the plan is for it for this year as well. Ms. Lucy Pearson, I welcome you to the webinar and also to the summit stage at this moment. Welcome so much and thank you so much for taking the time to welcome our attendees and also spending the time this afternoon with us. Welcome, Lucy. Thank you so much and welcome to everybody. It's great to be here. As, as, as my colleague said, my name is Lucy Pearson. I'm a country director in Nigeria and I welcome you from a warm and sunny Lagos to the third edition of the Impact Africa Summit, an annual event designed and developed by the British Council and Ashoka to provide targeted support to social enterprises across the African continent. The summit provides a platform that seeks to accelerate and development of innovative solutions to Africa's most pressing challenges by inspiring, supporting and connecting leading social entrepreneurs and key ecosystem players across countries, organizations, and sectors. Being a Pan-African event, the summit offers opportunities for continual cross-continental learning, exchange of knowledge, and collaboration between social entrepreneurs across Sub-Saharan Africa. With previous editions held in Johannesburg and Nairobi, the mobile nature of the event ensures a continuous transfer of learning, knowledge, and innovation from one ecosystem to the next. And given the disruptions caused by the COVID-19 pandemic globally, 
and the resultant government restrictions on large-scale public gatherings. This year's edition will be delivered digitally and the 2021 summit will comprise a series of carefully curated digital events spread across a period of 12 months. And this year's theme, sustainability and resilience, is a nod to the changing operational context and a commitment to supporting social enterprises with the skills, knowledge and networks needed to build resilience and to navigate the current disruptions caused by the pandemic. Today's event launch marks the launch of a year long series of digital events. And the session aim is titled Change Agility as a New Strategic Advantage for Social Entrepreneurs in the Fourth Industrial Revolution. We have speakers from Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, and Botswana who have generously agreed to share their technical knowledge and expertise with us. And for that, we thank them. I hope everybody here today enjoys the session and continues to connect with us over the course of the year's events. And for more information about those future sessions and activities, please visit the website, www.impactafricasummit.net. So that leads me to thank you again for joining us. Enjoy the session and I look forward to connecting with you again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lucy, for that very warm welcome. We thank you so much again for taking the time to welcome our attendees and also to open the first session of the Impact Africa Summit 2021 this year. Um, just a little bit of background, just touching on what Lucy has mentioned. The whole intent has been of the summit began last year. And I think many of you traveled the journey with us from the different sessions that we did, almost an explorer queue and an introductory um sessions on different topics that we heard last year that were meant to sensitize everybody and get everybody to engage and also be very excited about joining us on this journey. All of them will be digital, as Lucy has explained. The pandemic has caused us to take very innovative ways to, to pivot ourselves, to pivot how we also express uh, our, our messages and our webinars and how we also ensure that it is business as usual. And therefore, the summit this year will be held via many webinars that will be on our website, as mentioned before, www.impactafricasummit.net. Please go on there again, have a look and look at which sem seminars and which also webinars will be coming up. When I mention seminars, it's because there also will be an opportunity in our March session, which will be three days, where you will get an opportunity to also interact with other ecosystem social entrepreneurs. And there will be master classes and seminars and individualized sessions that you can have to speak to some of our entrepreneurs, some of our thought uh, leaders also in around areas that we think are important for our social entrepreneurship ecosystem. Please have a look at the website, look at what might be of interest for you and register accordingly. I would like to take this moment to now formally introduce and begin our program this afternoon by introducing the speakers that we have for you, the four, gen um, the four speakers, which is two gentlemen and also two ladies. I will first begin with introducing Mr. Amos Mpepu, who is the founder and director of Change Metrics, and he is based in South Africa. You're more than welcome, Amos. Good afternoon to, to you in Johannesburg, I believe, as well. And we welcome we welcome you to, to welcome you to this webinar this afternoon. Uh, good day, good day, colleagues. Uh, my name is Amos. Unlike in Tonyana, I'm not in a cold Johannesburg. I'm somewhere in Limpopo in the northern south of uh, that's, that's wonderful. Side of, Lucky you. of South Africa. So it's kind of warm, it's very hot, but it's raining also at the same time. So let me apologize in advance if I sound uh, that my connection is not good. It might be the rain, but uh, we always we also thank God for the rain. So uh, as Antonio has explained, uh, I'm an MD and a, a leader for a company called Change Metrics. Change Metrics is the management and is, is, is a change management and digital adoption company. Uh, we've been in business for more than uh, uh, five years. Uh, personally, I've been involved in change management and digital adoption for the past 15 years. I've been assisting a lot of organizations to embrace, to adopt change, especially in the technology space. I know everyone now is talking about the fourth or uh, the, for the fourth IR, for, for IR uh, the fourth industrial revolution. Um, and that's the work that we do to ensure that people understand what it means. Uh, if there's issues of uh, uh, adoption, if there's issues where people don't understand what it means, we get involved there. We assist companies to even ensure that their employees, their customers, 
they utilize the products that they've developed. So we do a lot of work around the change management space. We also do a lot of uh, work for our communities, uh, teaching young people on uh, digital transformation, uh, we're partnering with Microsoft in a number of programs. So that's the, the work that we do around change management and digital adoption. And I'm looking forward to add value in this session today. Thank you very much, Amos. Thank you very much for that very succinct and brief introduction of your company and yourself. I'll also be giving you an opportunity later on, once we've introduced all of our speakers, for you to tell me a little bit about why the passion around the, the work that you do and why also do you think that it was relevant or pertinent to be able to, to take part in this specific webinar and the value that you think the work that you're doing brings to the ecosystem and also our attendees at large. I would, like to, I would like now to take the opportunity to invite our next speaker, please, Ms. Mirabel Mora. She is the Editorial and Communications Head for Blank Papers Media, and she is based in Nigeria. Welcome, Mirabel. Hi, thank you so much, the amazing Diana. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure that this is my second Impact Africa Social Entrepreneurship Summit, and the first time was in South Africa, and it was super wonderful and i'm a storyteller i tell the stories of young social entrepreneurs young change makers around africa and i try to remind them that they or that we are not alone in our change making journey so i'm looking forward to exploring more about uh every single thing we're going to talk about today and also share my insight with every single panelist thank you Thank you very much, Mirabel. Thank you for that very short and brief description. We welcome you also to this webinar and we look forward to sharing many more insights with you later on in, in our discussions. May I also take this opportunity to invite Mr. Debohom Khalimang. He is a founder and the CEO of Spectrum Analytics and he is based in Botswana. Welcome, Debohom. Thank you for the warm introduction, Sintranyane. And let me say hi, Africa. I hope everyone is well and they're ready to interact wherever they are. And as already introduced, my name is Tabo Mogalemang. I'm an engineer by training, so I'm a problem solver. Hence, I'm an entrepreneur as well, because I need to monetize on problems that I solve. But I'm biased towards uh, solving problems with community impact. So I tend to work more with uh, communities I volunteer my time teaching upcoming developers how to code. We have run sessions with students ranging from primary school to secondary school. But I'm also interested in like improving the welfare of everyone around me. So I tend to also share a bit on organizational learning and why it's important towards us, especially in Africa in being able to build the capacity to solve our own problems. I also advise work with universities as well, because I, I tend to like mix with almost everyone. I like networking because I believe in collaborations as well. So as you know, my company you had, my company empowers organizations to use data to create value. And data really is like the modern day uh, mineral in the digital economy. Hence, I'm really excited to be part of this panel to share on how it could also help us gain competitive advantage in the fourth industrial revolution itself. Thank you. Thank you very much, Devoko, for that description and, and the introduction of yourself. I'm already getting a few ideas of some of the questions I'd like to ask yourself and Amos, especially because I think I can see we've got the right mix this afternoon. There are a few questions around agility and around fourth industrial revolution. You will educate not only a lot of the attendees out there, but I think you're about to educate me, especially on the value that can add to our social entrepreneurship ecosystem.
And now let me take the opportunity to invite and introduce and welcome our final um, speaker, Miss Lisbeth Barker. She is the founder of the Entrepreneurs Hub and she is based in Kenya. Welcome, Lisbeth. Hello, Ms. Baker, please, can you please unmute yourself? Can you please unmute yourself, Ms. Baker? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. You are actually muted, Elizabeth. You've been muted all along. Um, we've been trying to let you know such are the intricacies and the, and the funny hysterics of being online. Hi, Elizabeth. Can you please unmute yourself? <laughs> hi, Elizabeth. Can you please unmute yourself? You are muted. Can you hear me? Can you please unmute your sound? You you are muted. <laughs> sorry, I, and I, sorry, I am so sorry. And I could not hear you because you were scrambling again. Remember from before. So my apologies for having been uh, 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 on mute. <laughs> that um, is fine, Elizabeth. This gives you an opportunity, an extra five minutes of, of being a superstar. I give you another opportunity to please reintroduce yourself again, Lisbeth. I, I will, and I and I hope I will keep it short. <laughs> so my name is Lisbeth Bakker. Uh, I'm uh, I'm from Netherlands, uh, but I'm have I'm, I've been living in Kenya for the past seven years, um, and um, uh, 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 yeah, before coming to Kenya, actually, uh, since this is a forum about about the fourth industrial revolution, also. It's interesting to know that I started my uh, professional career 20 years ago um, in artificial intelligence, uh, which already back then was quite a big thing. Um, it's been going in waves. <laughs> um, but uh, after, uh, after starting in, uh, in AI, I actually uh, worked in corporate for more than 10 years, worked with, uh, with Philips Lighting, with Orange Business Services. I've been very lucky to have been living in a few different countries, um, like France and Spain. Uh, done projects in quite a few countries across the world, from Brazil to US to South Africa, Senegal, Egypt, China, Vietnam, um, to mention just a few. Um, so seven years ago, uh, why I ended up in Kenya was because I had a friend who was running a startup here. Um, and um, uh, so, so, so I saw that, hey, there's a lot going on here. Um, with with a, with a lot of interesting uh, um, yeah young companies coming up, um, and one of the needs that I saw in the market was actually there were a lot of 
uh, incubator accelerators. Unfortunately, a lot were focused, and they still are, on, on technologies, um, um, eh, on technology and funding. Uh, so that's why I founded the Entrepreneurs Hub to just be um, a support ecosystem for any entrepreneur uh, who just wants to start a business, uh, which does not need to be in technology. It does not need to be uh, uh, fancy apps that, that, that would attract uh, venture capital. So it was really about actually, how do you run a business? Who are your customers? Uh, how can you make it sustainable? Uh, so really about the, the knowledge part of running a business. Um, then two years ago, uh, I also uh, co-founded uh, Genie Center for Applied Science in Emerging Technologies. And what we do there is um, support um, uh, students, so educate students, but also work with corporates uh, to bring the emerging technologies to them. So we actually develop solutions around uh, anything from AI, blockchain, uh, virtual augmented reality, IoT. And we both educate on how, how it works, but also how companies can benefit from it um, and, and how they can create solutions around it. So we help with that as well. So I think that was uh, my, my introduction. <laughs> And I hope you could hear me now. Absolutely, we could hear you. Lisa, thank you so much for that introduction. And I think as I slowly um, allow for each of the speakers to join me on the screen, can I please get an indication from our attendees who is there, which countries are being represented at the moment? Because I know we've had various and many and multiple attendees from multiple countries previously. And we thank you so much for taking the time to, to enjoy the sessions with us because their aim is to share as much information with the ecosystem as possible. And thus we try and bring to you a wide array of speakers around very different um, backgrounds as well. Can I just uh, get an indication? I see somebody from Oyo State and I assume it's Nigeria. If I'm wrong, please correct me. I stand to be corrected. Who else is there? Let me just have a quick look. Um, can I see who else is there? Please don't be shy. Tell me where you're from. Tell me where you're joining us from. Say hello to us. I'll say hello to you back. I'll even give you a little bit of a, a shout out as they say and, and mention your name. I think the next three people who, who tell us where they are coming from, I promise I will mention your name and say hello to everybody or the whole world on your behalf okay let's get started so we've got Mirabel we've got Amos we've got Elizabeth and we've got Debucho joining us today <clears throat> we've got um a different context, I think, beginning this year. And I think it's quite relevant because when you look at the impact of the fourth industrial revolution and, and the impact on, and, on businesses and processes and how businesses are positioning themselves to use it to leverage some of the work that they need to do. And also, especially taking into consideration the pandemic that we, we, we've we just gone through the, the heat of it, but we're still at the, at the sort of the remnants are still trickling down further even into this year. But I think we've seen how it has been important to position yourself to be able to still share your message, engage with the world, be able to, to sell your product, whether it be social in this instance, to the rest of the world and also to your fellow peers. Okay. And, and using digital platforms and digital innovations has been one of the ways that I think many businesses have been able to, to leverage on that. Now, having said that, I would like to throw something to our to one of our speakers who's not expecting this. Um, there's the in our topic in our discussion today, we're speaking to change agility. Now, somebody like me, uh, change agility and Tunyana Raputsu Kita, change agility speaks to a concept that I truly I, I don't understand. I know that it speaks to versatile, easy, changing, um, adapting. But can I please ask one of our speakers, Amos, can you maybe speak a little bit to what, what does change agility allude to? What is change agility in the broader context before we pull it down to this specific social enterprise element? Um, <clears throat> thank, thank you, Antoniana. I think that is the, the good uh, question to ask. I think the, the simplest way I'll say, if you watch uh, Fast and Furious movies, uh, you'll understand exactly what uh, change agility is all about. I mean, agility, what it means basically, it means the ability to move quickly and easily. Agility is the ability 
to move uh, quickly and easily. And in a change context, it's easy to say, how, how are you responding uh, to changes that are happening? You know, are you fast and furious? Or are you that one who say, no, I'll see how other guys are doing, then I'll join later? Um, that, that, that's what agility it means. And, and, and there's, there's been a study by PwC uh, in 2013. Uh, they've interviewed uh, uh, over 1,000 CEOs around the world. And, and, and the outcome of the study was uh, out of the CEOs that were interviewed, 76% uh, of the CEOs said um, the, uh, the, the change, uh, change agility, it gives you competitive advantage. And I think that is the crux of our, our session today. It's all about to say, you know, how, how, how fast are you? You know, how, how, how furious are you? You know, how, in terms of change, in terms of responding and adapting to change. Back to uh, thank, mm. thank you so much. For, thank you so much for that, Amos. And I think mm. it, it, it sets the context because I think mm. that's exactly what the, the new way of thinking now needs from all of us. Mm. It's about that ability, like you mentioned, to, to pivot quickly, to react to your, to your surroundings, to react to how the world is now as we speak. Um, engaging with each other. And I think that's the, that's the importance of it because when we look at change, there's now the next component that I'd like to also allude to. I'm only setting the, the foundation, setting the context so that we understand where we're going with the conversation. The next element in, in our talking state is the fourth industrial revolution. Now there's a term, there's a mouthful. We know we've had many other first revolutions second industrial revolution, the third, and now we're in the fourth industrial revolution. And I think commonly I've heard it mentioned in very in various conversations with our peers and colleagues. And Hello, Kista. Yes, yes. yes, Peter. Are you Hi, Peter. Blessing. 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 Okay. Thank you so much, Peter. We'll be That's fine. Thank you, Peter. We'll be changing to our other um, sign language interpreter, Blessing Ini. She'll be joining us shortly. Please just give us a moment while we well, we, we bring her in. But as I was just saying, that fourth industrial revolution term, it has been thrown around in social settings, business settings. Um, and and I, I don't know if really we, we understand what that means and what the implications of that and why it is something that needs to be put in the forefront as something that is an enabler for not only traditional businesses, but also as we dig further in the conversations today, specifically why it is an enabler for social enterprises. So oh, can I also ask one of our speakers today? I'm also throwing this speaker under un, under the un, under the bus again and asking him to please. Can you just give us a, a description, an explanation for us laymen out there? What does it mean when you speak about the fourth industrial revolution? Deboko, over to you. You, you, <coughs> you are muted, Deboko. You are muted. Ah, I was just thanking you for throwing me under the bus. Uh, let me You're get welcome. my. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'm I'm happy that's where we started because you know I've attended so many conferences, workshops, and the the term has been it's a buzzword now. Let me just say, and the the problem with buzzwords is you know we we tend to then converse around these buzzwords assuming that we all have the same perspective on what they mean. I have mine. I, I tend to explain the fourth industrial revolution this way. And for me, it's about recognizing the factors that are driving change at this time. And if I was to give it a bit of context relative to the past industrial revolutions, one may go back to the late 1700s, uh, 1780s or somewhere around then when the first industrial revolution came about. I think the other context that we tend to miss when we explain this is the economic climate of the time as well. So if you go back to around then, you know, people relied on manual labor a lot to, to, for farming, to, for whatever they were doing really. And that's when we started seeing the introduction of mechanical uh, tools, uh, mechanization was the factor that drove the first industrial revolution. So it kind of changed things on a large scale there. You can think about uh, the, your steam engines, you can then think about what it 
the impact it had on agriculture now, you can think about uh, milling plants and all that. So that meant people were now able to save uh, human energy, people were not working as hard, machines were doing the work for us, and hence we could scale and the impact could be felt in other areas as well. Move to the second one, which is like in the 18, late 1800s, almost after 100 years, now we see the introduction of electricity. So that kind of means we can do things much faster now. It's no longer mechanical, because with mechanical stuff, sometimes it had, still had to be rely a bit on like humans powering the machines. Now the machines could be powered by electricity. And that meant at that time now, we could mass produce things. We started seeing the introduction of uh, in factories, uh, production lines now, where now we could then for the economic times, then we could mass produce things. You can think of uh, the production of Ford, um, vehicles and all that. So you you can you then need to look at the time and the factor there. The factor there was electricity. It changed the game because we could then do th more things faster and all that using machines that were now operated by electricity. Go to the third one, almost after the after hundred years as well, which is like 1960s, 70s, the introduction of electronics where now we could automate the early stages of automation, automate some manual tasks, really. I know for, for Africa, you know, like, it, and the context there needs to come out. Those were the times when most African countries were still struggling to get independent. So Africa has been excluded from the first one and the second one. And the countries at that time in the 60s were confronted with the need to mechanize stuff in agriculture, do away with cattle for plowing and all that, and perhaps try to adopt that uh, tractors. Then we also didn't have electricity, we're still using firewood, so we needed to think about electricity now. And you know, the factors from the first and the second industrial revolution were inherited by most African countries in the third industrial revolution, when computers now were part of work. Fast track to the fourth industrial revolution now. This one is a game changer. It's, it's in, it started in the 2000s and take the time, 40 years from 1960s to the early 2000s. So now technology, what it has done, computers, in digitizing computers, we have disrupted almost all industries. We have disrupted how we live how we work, how we connect together. And this change is happening on a large scale, it's global. The scope cuts across almost all industries and the impact is felt across board. So now all of a sudden the rate of uh, technology introduction is outpacing the rate at which we are able to adopt it. So now that is why now change agility then comes in. But for me, the fourth industrial revolution is really about fast change and interconnected devices that are digital. So now most African countries, even at this point, we didn't get the factors that drove the first one right. We still trying to electrify many other areas as well. And then most workplaces are also getting computers. So Africa is sitting at a unique position in that we are now confronted with all the factors of the last industrial revolution and an increasingly changing world as well that we need to adapt to. So for me, the fourth industrial revolution, I tend to explain it in that context without maybe relying too much on the technological side of things. I hope that I hope I got myself out of the bus. <laughs> you did it very well, Temoko. You did it very well. Well done to that. I think next time you will we will swap over you and I and we'll see how I'm able to to react to what I've just done to you and Amos. But thank you so much for that. I, I, I would like just to explain why I was setting the context for that because we, we were looking at one component, which is the change element on, and agility and what that means so that we set the context for the conversation. And then we're looking at also unpacking what we mean by the fourth industrial revolution. And I think before we even get to its impact on social enterprises in particular, 
it, it's it's always important to understand the terms that we're putting to in the room and we're we're throwing out there to to our audiences and also just so that we can also articulate it better for ourselves. And just having said that, Dimko, you mentioned um, three elements that I that I will later on in the conversation allow us to explore further with our with our other speakers as well. You mentioned um, around. Uh, the, the the use of I think machines if you if I remember correctly and also you, you talked about the the African context as well and then there's also when you talk about the the economic transformation or how things were done differently right from the first revolution right up to where we are and those being some of the drivers of these these economic revolutions I, I'm picking up something and I'd like to also just give it to to my other my other speakers I will I will maybe delve in it a little bit and give everybody an opportunity to give us a bit of their thoughts around this. I'm, I'm hearing from you and I'd love for you to share your, your thoughts and also from our attendees as well, listening to us now, share your thoughts on this. There is a discussion or, or sort of a debate in the room around the competition between machines and human beings. Fourth Industrial Revolution has been pegged as us competing against machines and it being uh, a drive towards automation, a drive towards removing the human element uh, around there. And, and that's the impact on businesses going forward. And the second one also that I, I'd like to look at as well is that th there's another rhetoric around saying this is the time, this is the opposite side. So I've just given you the element that speaks to machine versus human. And then there's another rhetoric in the room that says this is the time that an entrepreneur can now revel and soar and show their true resilience and show their true ability to be agile, to be successful using the fourth industrial revolutions and some of the tools that are given to, to him or her. And, and the last component that we'll talk to again is how relevant is this and how, how much is it in our hands when we look at the African context? How much are we positioned? Because some of the conversation that we've also heard is that Africa right now is the most highly positioned continent with young people, Unemployed, yes, but now the most entrepreneurial group coming up with innovation and coming up with skills that were traditional before, but now actually need to be more innovative. So the skills that the, the African youth are coming up now um, are, are showing innovation and problem solving. So that has also been in the room. So, and I'd like to just put that out to our four speakers as you all join me again on the screen. I would like us to talk to a little bit around why is change agility? And in your context, please, I'll give each speaker an opportunity to speak in your context and in the space that you, you work in, in your ecosystems, in your peer discussions, in your interaction with maybe government and so forth. How important is change agility to social enterprises at this moment in time. And then I'll start unpacking the other elements that I've spoken about. Um, but how important is change agility? And how important is us trying to debunk the theory of human beings and human, human skills versus automation and the machine? And just that sort of component that adds everything together. What about the African landscape right now makes it as fertile as it is said it is for social enterprises to thrive when using digital or digitizing their ways of going forward, the importance of the fourth industrial revolution. Please, you're more than welcome. Um, speakers, my start with Mirabel, our storyteller, just a little bit, change agility, the African context, human versus machine, fourth industrial revolution versus um, uh, the, the skills that are needed for our young people to acquire innovative skills. A little bit from you, Mirabel. And please, I always, I always say this, you're welcome to share it in your context, in the work that you've and share some of the practices that you come across. Mirabel, up to you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nathiana. And I remember when I was about, would I say, 13 or 14 years old, and I used, I used to wonder, what, it, what would it be like to meet someone from another country or what would it be like to just see someone who is from South Africa or somewhere and I mean look at us right here you know the whole hyper connectivity happening today 
it's also as a result of all the revolutions that have happened from the first, second, third to fourth. First one being that uh, we were humans were more of physical energy and using animals, but then they transitioned to mechanical. And then second revolution having to do with much more electricity, and you saw we saw mass production of things. And then the third revolution, industrial revolution, we saw we saw a lot more of you know, supercomputers coming into place. And then now the fourth revolution building on the third, you know, industrial revolution. And speaking from a the aspect of a marketer or a communications person, there's something we usually say in growth hacking that's rapid growth and experimentation are things that come with wanting to move further. And when you are experimenting with the resources that you see right now, it makes you adapt to the other things that happen and let's say somewhere in 1914 probably writers were looking for writers were just thinking oh i need to read the greatest classics so that i can you know pitch my story to a newspaper or you know um or people those kind of thoughts then you know put back put us back in 2021 right now writers are no longer thinking oh, do I, uh, do I learn all the classics? Do I learn all the grammaticals? Yes, we have to. But then we now have social media. And then we now also have uh, writers are now learning more about digital marketing, which came, which came with supercomputers and, you know, uh, this fourth industrial revolution and, you know, all the cyber activities that happen. People now have to learn about marketing, you know, and then writers no longer need to go you know they don't they can choose if they want to be self published or if they want to be or if they want to go through another publisher and now we have you know thanks to social media digitization people can choose to just publish themselves of amazon and even writers and storytellers who you know want to be much more visual they now go as far as even telling stories to um, augmented uh, virtual realities and you know telling better stories and let's just look at it this is just coming from a writing aspect and a marketing aspect you know being able to get more data on the kind of people we are marketing to or our products are getting to all this information with the whole connectivity of the entire world right now and you know just look at other revolutions other revolutionary innovations that have happened people 3d printing in different industries 3d manufacturing and then it's true that with all the revolutions that have come and with all the machines and everything that have come people it creates more jobs each revolution creates new jobs and also really puts people out of jobs and the whole idea is that the more this the more we grow the more growth we take in each revolution people actually have to level up, social enterprises actually have to level up, but it comes in form of skills. People have to learn new skills to be much more adaptable to the environment that they find themselves. And you find that, you know, before you had to put in so much energy to do X, Y, Z, but because of new automations, new IT skills, new, new things that you can do online, it really reduces your stress and it really helps you connect to a lot more people. So there's, we like to say in an actor that we see possibilities where others see possibilities. And, you know, as much as people are grappling between losing jobs and also gaining jobs, but on the bright side, it comes with a lot of skilling up in order to access lots of opportunities that and they are there, they're literally out there, but we just need to skill up ourselves. Thank you so much, Mirabel. Thank you so so much for that. And I think one, one, what I've just picked up is exactly what you said. It's it's the change element and the use of this new type of technology and innovation. It also allows for, and specifically in your in your area of work, a different way to express yourself and a different way to also engage with audiences. And whether it be in the creative space and whether it be in, in, in the business space, whether it be in the selling of a product, it is a way that gives you an advantage. If, if I'm understand. It cannot be something that can take you back. It can only be something that can give you an advantage over the previous way of expressing yourself or the previous way of engaging, not only with your, you know, your audience, you know, but also with your potential customers okay. and, and clients. Now, and I really hope that this is what we'll try and unpack to show why in itself 
the agility and the change is important and how the use of fourth industrial revolution tools and, and modeling will also be able to help a lot of our social enterprises out there who may be still in that transition phase, especially taking into consideration the pandemic. In that transition phase, how do they leverage and how do they take those this new way of working and make sure they use it to their best of their advantage and soar with it? Having said that, Lisbeth, can I now just come to you and just also engage you a little bit. In your introduction, you mentioned a lot of the, the AI, augmented um, virtual reality. I think you mentioned blockchain. These are all the ways that come with the term fourth industrial revolution. But I would like to ask, apart from those much more cumbersome and very technology driven um, uh, tools that, that, that the 4IR brings forth. What about the 4IR also brings about this, the softer element, the, the digitization element, and what does that mean? Are there softer elements that are more user-friendly and maybe not so overwhelming to a social enterprise or social entrepreneur who's joining us this afternoon as one of our attendees? And to make it more palatable, maybe more tangible down to what does that mean for that social enterprise that is in uh, a village in Enugu, as, as Spencer just said, he's joined us from Enugu, or um, a village in, 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 in Limpopo here in South Africa, that social entrepreneur who's trying to break out of the previous or the traditional mold. What about those four IR tools can they then decide to engage with and what can help that, that enterprise? Elizabeth, over to you. Thank you for that. And I, I, I'm now unmuted. Yeah? I, I want to check. <laughs> um, uh, actually, I want to, maybe uh, my answer is uh, in two parts. Uh, but first, I want to continue on what, uh, what Mirabel was also saying uh, about that, that any technology, hey, you, you, you've got jobs that will be lost and jobs that will be gained. Um, but to put that a little bit in perspective, so as you know, uh, in Kenya, a lot of people know that we've been quite advanced when it comes to mobile money. Um, now, mobile money and such, it's maybe not, well, you could see it even as part of the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, but if you think about it, um, just there's, there's one thing, which is the technology, which is that you're able to pay uh, through a mobile, a mobile phone, right? So, so one thing is that the actual technology, but then the interesting thing is all the usages that come from that, uh, had that new technology. So in this case, because you can send money um, via mobile phones, you don't uh, anymore have to go to a physical bank. Uh, you can actually send it, uh, for example, back home uh, th from, from the city through the rural area very easily. Um, there's, uh, it's 24 seven, you can do it at any time, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So because of uh, the application that the mobile money brings with them, what we've been seeing is that actually it's been very easy now for a lot of um, uh, small, um, uh, small, yeah, what we call mama bogas, right, the, the, the small shops uh, to be uh, much more um, uh, lenient in the selling um, and buying uh, because uh, they were enabled through uh, the mobile money. We've also been seeing all across the country, even the most illiterate people, uh, because now they had access to mobile money, they could be setting up uh, their businesses at any, co at, at any places. So what I'm trying to say here is that one thing um, had to, uh, one thing to look at with something like um, uh, technological innovation, is the technology itself. Yes, that is great. But there's also anything that is sprouting from that technology, which actually is giving a lot of opportunities for businesses that can be sprouted from there. Um, so that so that's one thing that I want to give, give to hey, a lot of the, the, the social entrepreneurs in this call is that don't don't um, just get tunnel visioned by the usage of of of, of hardcore technology. Uh, also, you look at hey, what what are the derivatives of it, um, and then and then hey, your 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 other question was more about hey, what what can any company uh, or any social entrepreneur anywhere um, uh, across Africa uh, benefit without having to be a techie? Um, 
I think there is a, um, uh, one thing is actually um, uh, for me the industrial revolution is a lot of access of information um, as was as was mentioned earlier as well and that means I mean myself I have like uh, if, if if you can see it like 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 a, a feature phone but it is a smart feature phone um, so it's a small upgrade and with that from here I can actually access the internet i can access the social um uh, social media um so this is giving me a few things through social media i can make connections that otherwise would have been out of my league so you can actually use social media to connect with people that are not within your network but thanks to social media are now approachable so that it, it opens up a whole new network something else is um that uh, because you've got access to more information, if I take agri, agri business as an example, um, I think we've also heard about something like precision farming, right? So precision farming, what that really means is um, using external information, like for example, weather data um, or uh, information on, on, the, on the soil, um, or potentially, um, uh, yeah, th there's all that kinds of different data that because it's available um, out there, if you connect it to what, what your business is about, you can actually start forecasting, um, you, can, you can start optimizing your performance. So those are just a few examples on how actually some, yeah, technology, of technologies that might be out of your scope you can actually bring uh, bring within. Are you still there? Uh, yes, I am still here. And what, what I also find very interesting, and thank you for that as well, is that you mentioned quite a few terms that I think are also interchanged sometimes, and we don't understand how each one fits into the bigger picture and how eventually it comes down to the individual or the social entrepreneur themselves. You mentioned data, and I think you also mentioned um, applications, um, and I think you mentioned something else that um, Mirabel also alluded to at the beginning, access, connections beyond not only your geographical um, um, uh, people around the, the areas that you live in, your geographical context, but also access and connections to people that are also might have been seen as being out of your economic context as well, and how 4IR tools and, and modeling allows for that. And I, I'd like to also just engage um, Debuho and on this as well, and, and, and just to say, when we speak about applications, Lisbeth has given us an example about mo mobile money and how that is something that can, can, can be an application that an entrepreneur, a social entrepreneur, whether in a rural context or also in a, an urban context, that is the application that has therefore resulted in the benefit because of fourth industrial revolution modeling and tools. Um, Deboho, are you able to also maybe share other ways that um, we as social entrepreneur can, can, can benefit from some of these tools and also some of the modeling that currently exists or what is available out there. And sometimes maybe just educate us on what, what, what are we taking for granted every day that, uh, that we can actually leverage or an entrepreneur can leverage on in order to increase access again, as Lisbeth has mentioned, and also connection to different markets. Questions, but uh, I'll do my best to be brief as well to that. Uh, I'll carry on from the, the other speakers and the question that you previously asked, just so that we, we carry the conversation forward. Fourth Industrial Revolution, though people say it's going to replace humans, what it's doing is it's, it's, it's a, I don't see it as humans versus machines per se. I see it as manual work versus intelligence. And intelligence there really because we have digitized almost all areas of our lives. We have digitized even all industries now. We have digital technologies, digital equipment in healthcare, in agriculture, in government, you name it. We have put in a sensor or some form of a computing device in there. What these devices have is the ability to collect data. 
So now that's where you hear your big data and all that. And this data needs to be processed. Then it comes with other technologies as well. So what is really advanced is that for the first time, we have a confluence of technologies, not just a single technology, driving change in health, in education, in so many areas of our lives. And now the human mind doesn't process information at the same rate. So then all these manual and repetitive tasks, do we need a human being? Is that the best uh, utilization of human capacity to do something that is just laborious and repetitive? I don't think so. Humans are by nature creative. Hence, creativity and intelligence now is where we are going to have to compete if we want to be competitive and, and be agile and resilient in the fourth industrial revolution. So we need to compete at that level. So we are creating high value jobs. And these are maybe now even your accounting, you know, like it, take accounting, for example, we no longer do double entry on ledger books. The computer does that. Yeah? So now we are able to even crunch numbers in large quantities. So the thing with all this now, where what we are seeing is for Africa, even though the world, all these industries are disrupted everywhere, in Africa, we still have most of our challenges are social. It's not even just about industries. We see so much poverty in our communities. We still don't have uh, access to healthcare and all that. For businesses, have predominantly focused just on profits. That's why we have so many multi-corporates, but now we kind of need to bring it to where we live in our communities. We want impact in our communities. We want to transform life in our communities. And that's where I believe social entrepreneurs need to look, or modern entrepreneurs really, because that's what I believe the future of entrepreneurship is social because the, we are seeing so many social challenges and who's going to solve them if it's not the entrepreneurs? So there are so many opportunities opening up there. But at the same time, are we able to reskill ourselves at a faster rate? With agility, then, if you think about it, is the ability to learn quickly. And to learn also means to unlearn old ways of doing things. Hence, we need to challenge our thinking because the world is moving ahead at a faster rate than we are catching up. So if we don't become agile, we are going to be left behind. And if I could also bring the African component to this, I'll say the fourth industrial revolution, one of the things I love about it is for the first time, Africa is thinking about its own economy like everyone else. In the past, we just inherited stuff like from where the other countries had been. And here we are, we can think about how to remodel things to our context and not just import and digest things as they are done elsewhere. And Lisbeth mentioned something I like, mobile, mobile money. If you take mobile money to Europe where everyone has uh, bank accounts, it doesn't make sense. So we need to be context specific when we want to solve African problems. That's one thing I'll put to uh, entrepreneurs in Africa or social entrepreneurs in Africa. Look in your community, solve a problem that you care about and be motivated by impact. And if you can do that, solve that problem, create impact, then the revenue part will come on. You know, we have a uh, British Council there to help you with those entrepreneurship skills, but nobody really can get you to maybe care about a problem and even think about creating impact in your community. So uh, I'll just stop there, but I have a lot that I would love to share, but time is of essence here. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Debo. I, I, I believe you've hit the nail on the spot. That's exactly what I wanted to understand, looking at the context of what those tools are and, and, and how we how social entrepreneurs can trickle them down to their everyday existence. 
the everyday existence of their of their business, the everyday existence of how they can grow themselves, the everyday existence of how they can gain more exposure. And, and I'm very happy that you also mentioned that. When, when you talked about um, and the element about um, being agile and, and, and the element of flexibility, Amos, I would like for you as, as, as our speaker and our specialist in this area this afternoon um, to speak more to, to, to what is change agility. And I know that it, it's it's connected to change management. It's connected to being able to be flexible as a business, to being being able to to move within different changes, different markets, different business practices as well, and how and how you engage with the different markets, and how you also adapt. One of the ways that Lisbeth and Debuch have spoken to now is the use of of mobile money, and that it might not be as as applicable in 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 a European or first world instance as it is relevant in our in, in in our African context. But can I give you that opportunity, please, Amos, to maybe just unpack for us just a little bit what this change agility means and what does that mean for an entrepreneur, specifically a social entrepreneur, who are traditionally or inherently and even historically always coming from an underdog and having to triple up to be, be able to, to be competitive with the more traditional um, entrepreneurs. So I'm looking at internal, external changes, flexibility, economic transformation. What does this change management process mean for our social entrepreneurs in order to leverage on that? Thank you, Amos. Um, thank you, Antoniana. I'll try to simplify it. I think the, 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 it's, it's all about adaptability. Um, it's, it's all about adoption. Um, and I also wanted to touch base on what uh, Taboho has been saying. And, and also, I think if I were to demystify something here and to say uh, 4IR is not for IT people, not only for IT people, it's not only for techies. Um, this is about us having an opportunity. This is about us having uh, these opportunities that will help us to enable our business to function better. You need to look at it in a point of view of in a business enabler. I mean, Tabo mentioned uh, in the first uh, uh, industrial revolution, we, we he talked about steam. So steam was an enabler. The second industrial revolution, electricity was an enabler. The third industrial revolution, computers were enablers. Now we're in the fourth one, internet, mobile is an enablers. And when you look at the third and the fourth one, we are, we, we, we're moving from skill to kind of uh, the, 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 the knowledge uh, type of uh, environment where now it, it, it will be an opportunity as human beings to begin to rest. And, and as social entrepreneurs, this is your time to rest because technology uh, in the context of 4R is going to do things for you that human beings could not do. And human beings are going to be focusing on things that matter the most. And you'll be focusing on things that you're supposed to do as a human being, like decision making. Uh, perhaps uh, somebody spoke about the intelligence or start applying your intelligence better. And we're, we're, we're at a time where now um, technologies uh, through automation, they are going to be doing a lot of things that we couldn't do. I mean, there are, there are a lot of examples. I mean, uh, in social entrepreneurship, uh, especially in remote areas, um, you find that in clinics, I'm just giving an example, in clinics, you have older people always going to clinics at a particular time to collect chronic medication, walking long distances to collect chronic medication. And when I say technology is an enabler, now there are businesses, social entrepreneurs that have invented uh, drones. Now, instead of um, uh, all people walking long distances to clinics, you find a situation where you can send drones to where these people are. You know, so now that on its own, the fact that you're using a drone is connected to the internet, it can read where it's going, it enables something uh, in, in, in our community. I think we need to see it in that context. Now, coming back to the question of, 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 of change agility, you have to be agile at the, as a social entrepreneur. You need to understand what is happening around us. Um, I always uh, tell people that shift is happening. Our world is shifting. Our world is no longer the same every day. Things are changing every day. There's a lot of uncertainties. There's a lot of ambiguity. There's a lot of things that are happening around our work, a lot of things happening around our, our environment. And even COVID-19 is a testimony to that because our world just overnight transformed. Um, I'm sitting on this chair. I've been sitting on this chair for the past couple of months doing the work that I do, uh, assisting organizations. But now my work is no longer confined 
to uh, a public uh, to, to physical facility, I can do the work remotely. And this is what is happening. You, you need to you, you need to adapt. You need to know what is going on. And, and the reason why uh, in in a change in a change environment, we also have a way to assist people to adapt, assist people to be agile. But there's a simplified process and methodology that I shared with Tonyana the other day that the reason why most people are not agile enough. I mean, there are a couple of reasons, but I want to just uh, sum up the reasons into five. One of the reasons could be perhaps you don't know, perhaps you don't have information, perhaps you are not even aware of what is this IR is all about. And I think we need to start uh, studying the and the Boys Later Foundation explaining exactly what does IR for IR mean. I think for most of you social entrepreneurs, now you can understand that for IR is an enabler. Uh, it will enable us to do our business better, to be effective, to have uh, to, to to maximize our profits is an enabler that you just need to start looking at your business, identify the problems that you want to solve, and look at the bouquet of service solutions that 4IR is presenting, and pick one and apply to that. Sure. Now, if you don't have awareness, if you don't know, uh, it's very difficult to buy into something that you don't know. So there's uh, the companies like Microsoft, Google, they've developed a lot of training programs for free so that people can understand what does 4IR mean. But, you'll, but it's very difficult to get a course called 4IR because they, 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 then you they drill it down into what, in, in the practical terms, like digital transformation, you'll get to understand what that means. Artificial intelligence, you need to go and get information. You need to attend webinars. You need to attend sessions. You need to get the free information. The other part, apart from awareness and information, is on the issue of desire. You can have, you can, you can have information, but if you don't have desire, if you don't have interest, is where also the uh, most social entrepreneurs might find themselves in. You need to start having interest. You need to start being curious to know what is this AI? What are they talking about when they say artificial intelligence? My colleague was talking about uh, writing, you know, that even these days you, you can publish a book without having to go to the old route. You need to have interest, understand exactly, you know, what is happening out there, have an interest. Then the other part, again, apart from having interest, is having acquired knowledge. Uh, you need to learn. You need to study. You need to learn these things. And I'm going to go back to the what I was saying about Microsoft, your Googles, uh, and other uh, IT big company, your Amazon, have got a lot of programs for free for Africa, where they're teaching Africans on these solutions, your internet, artificial intelligence, uh, data analytics, for free. And most of these things are available for free. And why are they doing that? They're doing this so that you can understand what you're talking about. You can understand the phase that you are in. And then the other part, again, from apart from uh, training, and skills is an issue of ability, being able to apply what you have learned. It is very critical as a social entrepreneur to begin to test these things, test them yourself. Um, there are there there are there are ecosystems, there are companies that are available out there waiting to test your problem. I mean, there are there 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 are people who are developers waiting to hear about your problem, and that can help you to make sure that you are able to implement uh, what you have learned. And, and that's some of the things that we're doing. We're encouraging organizations to do. We're encouraging people to do, to say, you need to understand these things. And the last part that I wanted to, to, to talk about is, the, and this is the point that led me to change management, is as a social entrepreneur, the solutions that you are developing, the solutions that you are busy with, you need to ensure that they, 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 they are being utilized. Uh, you need to ensure the investments you are making, you realize value out of that. Uh, if it's internally you're doing it for your own people, you need to ensure that your own people indeed buy in and they utilize that because if you don't utilize it, it does not it, 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 it does not add up in value. There are a lot of solutions costing millions and millions and millions of money sitting and not being utilized by people, not being utilized by customers. So utilization is also very important key. So yeah, in a nutshell, that's the work we do. What I'm encouraging is to find out, learn a lot, have a desire, develop yourself, if you don't know, there's information out there and begin to practice and learn more because 4R has to be practical. It has You have to apply it to your own environment. If you don't do that, it's going to be this elephant in the room. But it's all about application. It's all about knowing uh, what, what solution to use to address uh, which program, which problem, sorry. Thank you so much. Thanks to Antonina. Thank you so much. Oh. So there we go. Thank you so much for that, Amos. I, I, a hundred, 
percent, 110% implicitly agree. And I think that is the value add of the conversation that we wanted to have today to, to make our entrepreneurs and the social enterprises out there and the entrepreneurs understand that fourth industrial revolution tools and the and the concept of the four IR is not something that's foreign or exists somewhere in the cloud, excuse the pun, exists in the cloud, but it is something that can come to daily application and come to a daily use. And as you said, Amos, can be an enabler, something that now makes processes um, easier for that social enterprise instead of having to be traditional and manual about it. But also, and I think what I'd also like to add a little bit more as I, as I touch with Mirabel again, is to say it also allows for access and also allows for connection as well. So we're talking about taking your enterprise as a social enterprise and saying, what can you do and what tools can you use to enable your business to be able to leverage, your business to be able to be more economically transformational, your business to be more um, um, accepted and known and more competitive in the globe not just in the geographical area that you live in but also what what the fourth industrial revolution and the tools and the enabling components of it now allow is for you to now become a global citizen a global competitor a global in engager which has moved you from being somebody who may be in the garage traditionally and previously to now somebody who's got a website, who can have a webinar such as this, who can have an ad or a marketing exercise, which I'd like Mirabel to speak to now, which now touches everybody and everybody can just press with a touch of a button and they can pay and get a project that you're making somewhere in a town or a city within in, within the, the African continent. Now, Mirabel, I'm just alluding that I'd like to ask you, what about the connection component and the access component in your experience? Um, has has the have the tools that the, the, the four IR tools and the enablers around 4 are given? What has it done for not only traditional businesses, but specifically what can it do for the social enterprises? Thank you so much. I love what Amos said. I love what every single person said. And I've just been gleaning, like, just as you were talking, I was actually on Google, like, oh my God, this is this is powerful. What he was saying was powerful. Um, I'm talking about that access and what it does. So let's give this very great example. There are social entrepreneurs who are in rural areas, people like a, uh, people who are in rural areas and, you know, they're actually touching more on social topics. And they're also trying to use entrepreneurship to see how they can make a profit from what they're doing and also use that profit, not just to um, get a way of living, but also to provide solutions for what people in rural areas are going through. Let's say, for example, so this is an organization in a rural area, a company in a rural area, and then they are trying to solve a problem that that community has, but then they don't know how do we get a lot of people to hear about what we are doing? How do we get a lot of people to support what we are doing? How do we get a lot of people to, I don't know, make donations that can actually support and finance what we are doing? And then coming into what Amos said about data analytics, it is a very powerful thing we have in marketing as well and communications. Let's say now, going back to what Ntiana says, this organization or company starts a website. And then not only do they start a website, they actually have a very awesome marketer. And this marketer is, isn't just a traditional marketer. This marketer is someone who understands growth hacking, or understands how the psychology of people, how people think. First of all, people are emotional before being logical. And this marketer or communications person understands how humans think and how how to how to process how to get people to care about what these people in the rural area areas are doing and from this website then they they then you know decide to use the customer relationship management tool like a crm basically let's say something like um engaging networks and for for example and then from engaging networks they're able to use that website and thanks to facebook thanks to Google ads, thanks to Twitter, they're able to create these adverts that catch on with people. They're able to create this poster, social media things that reach out to people. And then 
not only do they just push it out there, thanks to Google Analytics as well, they are able to see, oh, you know, people are not engaging with X, Y, Z, but rather they're actually engaging with this. And like, oh, someone from South Africa, people are, our business is in rural Rwanda, rural Nigeria, but people from South Africa are actually liking more of our work, but rather people from urban Nigeria who we are actually targeting are not really liking it. What can we do differently? So, you know, they're able to analyze all of this data. And I know that working with a lot of social entrepreneurs, one thing, and working with a lot of people too who work um, in the grassroots area, social entrepreneurs who work in the grassroots areas, one thing they always look out for all of the time is funding. And not only funding, but then, you know, how can they get more people to hear about the work that they are doing? How can they, if, for example, they're working with children, you know, their business happens to have something to do with young children or women or girls, just youths, basically. You know, they're also looking at always, how do we help these kids who are in, how do we help these kids who we are trying to help? How do we help them find access to, you know, something huge. I know the story of a young man who um, happened to live in Makoko. And to explain what Makoko is, Makoko is a slum area in Lagos. It's a really, it's one of Africa's hugest, biggest slums. And, you know, he talked about losing his mom at a very young age, but then he went into social entrepreneurship, which is basically trying to find a way to feed and also trying to find a way to get the people around him to live a better life. And then, you know, thanks to all the work that he was doing, he had access, access via the internet. The internet gave him a lot of, um, a lot of information, a lot of knowledge, things that he was just learning and, you know, sharing his knowledge. And then, you know, one thing led to the other, so many things led to the other, and he was helping people out, you know. And then the next thing, he's currently a Chevening uh, scholar, no, a MasterCard scholar, rather. He's actually a MasterCard scholar right now. And, you know, all this access and connectivity to people that he he probably couldn't have met in the slum but you know because he decided to use the internet and learn so much for himself it just opened up doors for him and you know he could see possibilities where others were seeing impossibilities and you know that's the kind of thing that happens with marketing and you know using all cloud-based forms of marketing structures analytics looking at who your customers are or the people who are supporting you how can we get them to support us more how can we get them to actually spread the word about what we are doing and i remember a quote that i read on linkedin regrettably i don't remember who said it but i read the quote verbatim the performance of the product was restricted by the limitation my ignorance had placed on its functions the fourth industrial revolution, there are so many things, there's so many possibilities out there. Amos has mentioned, Lisbeth has mentioned, every single one of the panelists have mentioned these things. It's all about how do we use what mm. we've had, what we've seen here to actually yeah. enable more progress and not too much stress. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Mirabel. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. And it's it's exactly that. What you know and 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 how you use the tools that you you have ultimately is the determining factor of how much you can do with what you might not know and how much you can still take on and and try and and grow yourself as a social enterprise. Um, I, I did ask initially, please attendees, you're welcome to ask questions and make comments. I see some of the comments that we received. Um, our, our, our attendees are saying they're acquiring knowledge. Thank you, Marcelina. Um, and I see Gloria has also asked, please, which organizations offer training for Africans? Um, please um, engage with, with us further, Gloria, um, on the website. You'll have an opportunity also to ask some of the speakers directly, but do engage with us on the website, please, going forward. Um, but I think what I'd like to add in, I'm, I'm assuming the reason we don't have lots of questions today is because really it was about a debunking and information sharing and understanding and a connection of what the fourth industrial revolution means, what change agility means, and how the both of them combined become an enabler for social enterprises. Um, we're, we're, we're fast coming to the end of our discussion and our conversation. Oh my, how time flies. What I would like to just ask our speakers in, in closing 
It's just to say, looking at um, what we've just gone through, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic that we've not gone through, but the, the heart of it or the heat of it, we've just moved out of it and we're trying to slowly move into vaccines being available and being given to many countries globally at the moment. Um, what are the opportunities post COVID-19 do you see and what advice can you give to social enterprises around combining fourth industrial revolution tools, the applications as we've heard, I've heard we've used the word applications, we've used the word access connection, we've, talk, we've talked to geographic networks, we've used flexibility, being swift, being easily able to maneuver around business processes, quality, et cetera. Wow. And we've looked at also leveraging external and internal changes. And we've, we're also now coming to the point where I say, putting all of that together, what advice um, would you be able to, or maybe can I just ask because of the time limit, can I ask each speaker to possibly just give um, their top two elements of, of, of imparting knowledge from their area around social enterprises being able to leverage for, for IR um, enablers and also how that connects to the, the change and the agility around change for them. Just your top two that you would impart with the social enterprises and the entrepreneurs that are listening to us now. And the many who will be able to access this recording um, who could not maybe be able to join us today. Can I start with you, Lisbeth? Sure, thank you. Um, so um, uh, the one thing uh, that I think that COVID, eh, that, that it, it has brought a lot of negative things, but the one, the one thing uh, that uh, that has helped uh, is that we're now very comfortable with 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 technology. Uh, for example, this conversation that we're having right now, um, uh, everybody thinks now it's normal to communicate in this way. Uh, nowadays as well, when I'm having meetings, I don't need to wait until somebody is back in Nairobi. Um, we can actually have it while they are up in Kisumu or whatever. Uh, we can. We, it, we're much more flexible in in. Um, thanks to using technology to actually uh, use it to our advantage. Um, so I think that is at least one thing uh, that COVID has brought, that, that they were very comfortable now with, with technology. So my parting advice for the um, social entrepreneurs uh, would really be um, to, to, to get started and every single week make one tiny improvement. Either learn something new or apply something. Uh, if you don't yet have a Facebook page, then create a Facebook page. If you already have a Facebook page, uh, then start trying trying out different things. Like, hey, if I engage with in this way with people, what happens? If I engage in that way with people, what happens? Um, and the whole world is discovering these emerging technologies. So the fact that you don't know. <laughs> doesn't mean that you're the only one who doesn't. The beautiful moment right now is, and this is where I firmly believe that Africa will actually leapfrog, um, is because we're at par with the rest of the world. So ask questions. Don't think that you're the only one who doesn't get it. Uh, just, just get out there, ask your questions um, and find the information um, because we're all there. We're all in that stage. So yeah, that's what I want to say. Further to your underdog point. Stop being the underdog. We're exactly. Exhausted. Now that's beautiful. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you for that. Can I also just get a short and sweet also from Tebuho, please? One or top two that you think the advice that you would give to social enterprises out there um, post COVID 19? <laughs> Len, be adaptable. Uh, some, we, we talk about adaptability in terms of social enterprises, in terms of in the context of this conversation. But think of your mind as like a tool that can also change shape according to what you believe and what you consume information wise. So the ability to learn and learn and relearn is one part of adaptability. Being able to be agile also has to come through the mind. The other thing that I'd like to remind them, technology is a tool for solving problems. Don't focus on the problem. If you're a social enterprise, look around you, identify with people's pain. Pick a pain point in your community. 
care about solving it, the you, it will lead you to technology, to the best tool eventually. Change your mindset, be teachable, and then you'll make it. And I, <laughs> and also there are low hanging fruits really in Africa because you know we can just digitize, start with collecting the data that we can later build intelligence on. Don't think of the whole thing, experimentation, baby steps, but start and start somewhere as well. Thank you so much for that, Demokha. Thank you so much for it. The one message I'm getting from you, start. Take the first step. Teach yourself. Learn. Unlearn. And be willing to be flexible to change. Moving from you, Demokha, I also go to Mirabel. What are your parting insights for social enterprises and the advice post-COVID-19 and the advice going forward? Sure. Um... Based on what Tepoko uh, said, which is very important, your mindset is very key. And then at Ashoka, we all learned that collaboration is the new competition. There's so much that you probably wouldn't be able to do on your own, but then if you can reach out to someone else, some other company, some other organization, say, don't be afraid to say, I don't know how to do this, I want to learn. You know, every professional was once an amateur. So learn to collaborate with other organizations, see where you can outsource or see where the both of you can come together to create some kind of magic. But it's also important that you know the kind of organization you're collaborating with. So you be on the same page and you know where you're headed towards. And, you know, um, you're never alone in your journey. And, you know, post COVID-19, see possibilities where others see impossibilities and cheers to the crazy ones and the rebels and the change makers who think, you know, I have this crazy idea. I want to test out this crazy idea. Well, go ahead. We only live once, you know, so test out the crazy ideas and um, rapid growth and experimentation. That should be your watchword. Thank you. Super, super. Thank you for that, Mirabel. And again, as Mirabel put it, cheers, cheers to the guys who've already taken the steps, who've fallen, have wiped themselves and gotten back up again. The pioneers, thank you for your, your pioneering steps. You've opened the way for the rest of the other entrepreneurs. And just in closing, last but not least, Amos, what would you like to share with our social enterprises and entrepreneurs out there around post-COVID-19 and, 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 and the way forward and how to leverage on change um, and build change into their models? Um, th thank you, uh, Antoniana. From my side, um, I think I have high expectation from the social entrepreneurs. Uh, I know we're talking about post COVID-19, but also in terms of COVID-19 itself, you know, I, I expect more African social entrepreneurs to come up with COVID-19 related solutions. Um, I think we shouldn't be sitting, we shouldn't be sitting and folding our arms and waiting for Europeans to decide on when are we going to be getting vaccines on when are we going to be getting this, when we have all these technologies. And, and I think that is where now um, we have a big challenge. Uh, whether the next wave comes, whether it's COVID-19 or something else, we have to be ready, we have to be agile, we have to respond to whatever challenge that we're facing to ensure that uh, we really, really, really uh, understand the phase that we are in. But my advice specifically is understand your, your industry as a social entrepreneur, know where you fall under, know whether you're under media, under legal, healthcare, mining, finance, and begin to learn the technologies around that space to begin to learn what is happening around 4IR in those kind of industries. And the other thing, again, begin to, uh, to go deep and understand your customers' problems. Do a lot of work understanding your customers. And after you've done that, then go and identify the right solutions based on what is available in 4IR and learn and learn and learn and learn. So what we'll be doing today, uh, I, I can see it looks like I don't have access to the comments. But I'm going to post a link, uh, one of the couple of links where you can get free training and where you can start empowering yourself and start learning more about the things that we've been talking about today. Thank you so much. All the best. And I wish you well with your businesses. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Amos. And with that, we've come to the end of our webinar today. Thank you very much to the speakers who took the time, who joined us today, share their insights, share their advice. I think now you understand around what change agility speaks to. You understand what the fourth industrial revolution speaks to, the tools that you're able to use to enable your social enterprise. And I think you also now as an entrepreneur can see where it hits you um, at the coal face and what you can take and also research in order to grow your business. It's about connection, it's about access, it's about change, it's about um, impact, it's about gap analysis, it's really just about moving forward and also pioneering further. On that note, I'd like to say goodbye and I ask you please to look at, go onto our website www.impactafricasummit.net Please look at our upcoming webinars on the different topics that we'll be looking at this year, 2021. Be sure to register for all of them. Join us for those discussions. And also we look forward to having more input from you. Again, if you'd like to contact or speak to any of the other speakers that we've, we've um, hosted previously and the speakers today as well, you're, you will see that some of their profiles will be put on, on the website. So look at our LinkedIn, look at our Twitter, Go on to the website and we look forward to engaging with you further. Impact Africa um, Social Entrepreneurship Summit. Thank you, everybody. God bless. Goodbye.